Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhoneDev.tv. Okay, so we're working on this app. We've added the animations to show and hide these buttons programmatically. They're created all in code except for the top button, and we can slide in and out. We're using linear animations. Now I want to show you how to use physics to make this a little bit more interesting. So for the show and hide button, we're actually going to change the code here. We're going to change the logic a little bit, and we're going to use a new animation block. So we can just move things into it once we complete it. So just go to where our show button is and then go right above where we have our code, type uiview.animate. And now what we're gonna look for is the animation that has the spring dampening. This is gonna make it look a lot more interesting and non-linear. We'll double click on that to insert. Now there's a lot more parameters here that this lets us fine tune it a little bit more. So we can set the duration to be the same duration, 0.5, which is half a second. The delay is gonna be zero. I don't wanna delay right now, but you can play with that on your own time. So you can pause the video and play with that right now. All right, so for spring dampening, initially, I'm gonna go for 0.5, and then the initial spring velocity, I'm gonna go with zero, just to start. For options, I'm just gonna do nil, and for animations, I'm gonna press enter to auto insert the code. We'll get rid of that block, and then we'll click down here. I'll use the cursor to move right, I'll hit tab again, and we can type nil for the completion block. All right, so that's gonna give us a new animation block. We now need to move this code up top. So you can just cut it and paste it in, and then we can get rid of our original animation code because we'll no longer be using that. So that's how to add the, the spring dampening, and we'll go ahead and hit the add button and animate. You see that it will jump up a little bit. Now, in order to play with uh, the settings here, you might wanna make the, the button on by default, or you can just play around with the settings because every time you go back to it, you're going to have to re-enable the button. So if we scroll all the way up to the top just for testing purposes. I'm gonna comment out the hidden button so that we can still hit the button and test our animation right away. So you can see the difference. That second animation is a linear animation. The first one is springy. The second one is not, and it's just, it has less energy. So let's scroll back down. And what we're gonna be working on is just tweaking the value. So what I want you to do, play with adding a little bit more velocity. You can pause the video, play with these constants. Your spring dampening, this is a value from zero to one. So if we say zero here, we will see a lot more Nothing. All right, let's try point 0.2. So the problem is our animation is really short. So you might want to increase the delay and then the spring dampening might look better. So it depends on how long you want the animation to happen. I kind of wanted a fast animation, so I don't know if I want the super springiness. So I'm gonna go back down to 0.5, but it's really up to you. Pause the video, play with these values so that you can see something. If we don't want any dampening, we'll do a one. Or if we want dampening, we'll do a one, and that will cause it so that it just sort of slides up. It's still nonlinear. Um, it's a little bit slower than I'd like. So I probably wanna add some velocity here, and you can just play with the values here. I might add maybe 15 to 20, see what that looks like. So it's not as springy as I'd like, so let's add a 0.9, just to give it a little bit of a hint of a spring. So it's not super damped, but still damped. And we'll see that it bounces a little bit. If we go back down to 0.5, we'll get a little bit more spring. So I would probably keep it a little bit more subtle, but I wanna show you how this works so that you can get it working in your application. Okay, so that's that. Now we could copy this line and we could actually replace what we have up in the top and the bottom for our hide button so that we can Im implement the same thing. So this will make it just a little bit faster. So then our ending, we need to just add our completion. So we just double click. We copy this line on 110 and then we paste it down on 125 and that inserts our completion block and then we can do the same exact animation code again. So we have the bounce on both. If you don't want it to do as much of a spring, you can always dampen that a little bit more. So we can make this a 1.0, 0.5, 0 
and that will dampen it on the exit so you can see the difference. So you got a, a nice fast cutaway. It's not linear, so it's going to look a little bit more interesting. All right, so that's how you can add physics to not only your buttons, but your panels and hide or show user interface elements using code. So you've learned how to do it in Interface Builder. Well, this is how you can connect it using code with the NS layout constraints that you can set up for our leading, our trailing, and our bottom edges. And then we can connect them in code so that when we hit buttons or if timers fire, we can do different events and show some cool animations. All right, so thank you for watching. This has been a little tutorial. Let me know if you like this. I've got a lot of more courses on working with iPhone apps, doing different things, doing the logic, saving and loading. So check out the pro plan on my website if you want to learn how to do that. And as always, you can download all of the source code. Just sign up for the, the course that's in the link down below. Hey, this is Paul Soul. Real quick, I want to interrupt you. You're watching this tutorial on YouTube, and I actually have a course with all the source code, all of the video files that you can actually download. So what you need to do is just jump on over, click the link, and you can jump into this course. It's free. It's going to show you how to animate using auto layout in your iPhone apps with Swift. So if you're enjoying this, go ahead, click the link, and jump into the course. It's free and you can get started with building a nice animation using auto layout.